Hello, everybody, and welcome to our very first First Fridays webinar, The Crucial Components Needed to Enable Mobile Field Maintenance Procurement. I'm excited to introduce our featured speaker, Ron Fidjokowski, or as we like to call him, Fidge. Fidge is a true industry visionary and the Senior Vice President of Digital Supply Chain here at SDI. A member of the Rutgers Big Data Advisory Board, he's been recognized by Computer World Magazine as a premier 100 IT leader and has spoken at industry conferences such as Computer World's Mobile and Wireless World Conference. Over the past 20 plus years, Fidge has led the creation of SDI's digital supply chain management technology platform, now called Zeus, which has transformed procurement and industry management, in, in, sorry, inventory management for plant and facilities maintenance, repair, and operations. He's also led the development of our integrated parts management solution and fulfillment model used by some of the world's largest multi-site retailers to gain more visibility and control in their facilities and asset management supply chains. We're fortunate to have Fidge join us today and to share his knowledge and experience with us. And although the audience can't speak with Fidge directly, feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A box. We'll make sure he addresses them during the session or at the end during the Q&A. This webinar is being recorded and we will send a copy of the slides to the attendees in an email after the webinar. With that, I'll turn it over to Fidge. Thank you very much, Dev. Boy, with that introduction, I got to meet this guy Fidge someday. Thank you, everybody. I'm really looking forward to sharing some things with you. As Deb, Deb pointed out, we're going to talk about some of the things that SDI has learned. Uh, we, we've been on a journey for about the past five years. Uh, SDI and myself have been focused on looking at the supply chain. We, uh, SDI has been in the supply chain business for 50 years. Uh, what we said is let's look at the way things are being done, especially as related to field maintenance. and look at what we could do to develop some best practice and automation and what i'm going to share with you is not it's not a commercial about sdi it's going to be to share with you some of the things we've discovered in that five-year period and where to hopefully share so particular things i want to share I'm going to give you the overview of the components again it's not a commercial about sdi so we're not going to talk about the, the exact details of this but what we think are the components necessary to satisfy the, the field maintenance technicians that are working today. Some of the challenges, the challenges being some of these are opportunities still. Uh, some of the challenges we've attacked and have ideas in place or solutions in place. Some of them are still evolving. And then finally, we're gonna share some best practices. Uh, the best practices are meaning that in many cases, we're getting compliance to some of the things we're trying to do and satisfying some some suppliers are satisfying the technicians perfectly. Some are still on their journey. So by the end of this, I hope everybody gets some idea of where, where we, at least we've been, what we think. And I am sure hoping to get your feedback. So uh, I know we're going to give email addresses out and then we're going to sh share copies of this. So please be uh, able to send us things back and more than welcome to continue to answer questions as time goes on way beyond the times of the presentation, okay? So let, let's talk about some of the things we've learned. And the way I'm gonna do this, you're gonna see on the right-hand side, there, there's some screenshots. We're not gonna focus on the screenshots as I've mentioned before, but just this particular one I'll point out is the first thing you notice is the screenshots mobile. So that is part of the solution. What we found finally, uh, SDI has had some mobile technology available for 10, 15 years. Unfortunately, we found we were somewhat ahead of the time because the idea that everybody has a smartphone or an iPad or an Android pad it was way ahead of our time. Uh, finally, I think from our own consumer world, we know we, we can't go to a ball game we, in many cases, can't check out at, at places. We can't buy things unless we all have smartphones. I think we're finally at the place where it's an accepted norm that the vast majority of people and the vast, vast majority of technicians are carrying some smart device with them. So we can finally make use of that device to, to supply these best practices. Without a device, we're stuck. So the first thing we say is, okay, what do technicians need? Okay, well, when they go out, they're usually 
the primary process has been they go out, they've been given a ticket, the ticket says here's what's broken, they assess the problem, and eventually in many cases, not all, but in many cases they need spare parts. And that's what we're focusing on here. How do they more easily, how do we cut back the waste? How do we cut, reduce the time? How do we reduce the time and for searching for parts? So let's first step back and say what we found was common practice. Common practice has been that technicians go out, they assess a problem, they identify what they need, and then they go and try to find the part. They find the part in either credit, they carry a credit card, they go from store to store, they go from website to website, and, or, or they open a ticket with a central buying organization in some cases, and they say, here's what I need. And then it sort of gets a dis disjointed or disconnected operation. So the intent was, how do we empower the technicians to rather than going back and forth and losing something in the translation to find what they need and place an order. So what we found is that to do that, they need to have a consolidated search opportunity of the parts they typically buy. Now, the, the parts they typically buy, everybody knows the spare part industry. It's not one supplier supplies everything. There's going to be OE, original equipment manufacturer parts. There's going to be parts from distributors. There's going to be parts from third party practitioners, and there's going to be parts from, you know, general e-commerce sites. So the idea is give them in one place the ability to search for parts they commonly need. Now, that catalog should not be the catalog of everything a supplier may carry. It should be a catalog of the parts that they commonly use for that particular customer or industry or asset. So in order to do that, they need the ability to filter. So they need to be able, so a technician, we're trying to empower them. Some, in many cases, they'll say, I know what I'm working on. I need this part from this supplier. If they know the supplier, let, let them filter by supplier. If they know the manufacturer, search by manufacturer. But they, they need to be able to do that in one place, not go from site to site to site to find it. So our solution is to provide them a single catalog that has a composite list of the parts they provide and they need to buy from all of the suppliers they typically do business with. By giving them that, by the way, that also gives you the compliance you need to get parts from the suppliers that are part of your solution set. Deb, do you have a question? Binge, I'm wondering how many, on average, different suppliers could say um, a technician for a retail environment need to, to procure items from parts uh, we're, what we're finding typically is somewhere for retail 200 to 400 suppliers would be a reasonable estimation so that just gives you the size of the problem uh, but it's a great question it's not five suppliers it's not one supplier because again you I, I try to emphasize there's going to be a lot especially in retail of, of, of special product particular for that particular customer Thank you. The other thing what we're trying to do is say that at some of the best practices I point out here, besides filtering, that you want something that is is uh, guided learning. Uh, I, I point out AI. AI may be just at a infancy in this particular case, but we can all we've all seen the, the Chat GPT examples and what Microsoft's doing. And we need to start applying those tools to guide the technician to help him find what he wants. And that'll give him what, what they don't want is we want them to buy what they need from the suppliers of, in many cases, corporate choice. So the technicians don't want to have a set of rules that say I should buy this from vendor A and this from vendor B. Somehow the technology has to be able to empower them that and, and hide from them that that element. So. If there are particular contracts in place for suppliers or solutions from original equipment manufacturers, or you just want to make sure you get compliance that you get the right parts and not fit form and function replacements, that should all be powered by the technology itself. I mentioned I focused there on the first part being an ability to search a wide range of suppliers. And by the way, they the, the technicians should be able to place an order from by work order to three or four suppliers. It doesn't, the idea that a single work order be filled from a single supplier, in many cases is true, 
but in many cases, there's parts needed from multiple suppliers. So that, that we want to make that easy for the technician. He should be able to order his parts and search for his parts. And if they come from three suppliers, order one from each supplier and place the order. Okay. In many cases, and or in some cases, beyond the catalog, and and by and we see that we can get most of the purchasing from the catalog, from the custom catalog, there will be a need that the technology provide that sometimes the technician is going to come across something that's unusual, something that they typically never bought, bought from. In that case, what we see is there is a need for punch out to a wider catalog, but in a limited case. The problem with punch out is that if you punch out, you that again requires the technician to know who he needs to buy from. Again, that, that obviates the idea of the AI empowered solution that this is directed to go to this particular supplier of choice. But you may have contracts in place when you need a particular thing, you could have contracts in place with, with large distributors that will allow you to say, I wanna punch out and look for something that I typically don't buy. So punch out while not the solution is a particular, are part of the solution. So we see that if you have a tech, a catalog of say 200 suppliers, you may need to have the need for a small handful of very large distributors to be able to say the technician can punch out there when he's really stuck and needs to find something beyond that, beyond that item. What it still allows him to do is place all of his orders for a work order, and I'm gonna show later why that's critical, to, through a single application. Okay. Now, I focused on catalog. The catalog solution of the, the original 200 suppliers and punch out, what we're finding, and this is great from a service process, we're finding that if you put that in place properly, you can handle 90% of the orders that the technicians need when properly built can be handled by orders coming either from punch out which is a small part, that's probably 10%. And the other 80% would be from orders directly in your catalog. So that covers 90% of your order request. That means 90% of your orders can be handled by the technician directly with no human intervention. Because if they're coming out of the custom catalogs or punch out, the orders are all brought back to a single source and then placed immediately. Or if they need to go through an approval process, They'll go through the approval process, up, up a chain, get approved, and then still go out automatically. With, but the only human intervention there would be the approval process. And sometimes, even with the catalog, say you got 10%, that still will require somebody's help to find the, to, to, the solution. Technician comes across something, he's trying to find, he finds something he needs, but he can't identify properly exactly what he needs. So he needs help. So what do the technicians want? They want the ability to place an order to a procurement individual that is familiar with their job. And I'm gonna show the next two slides are gonna show two ways where we achieve that. So by commodity, they wanna be able to say, okay, I'm looking for an HVAC component. I wanna to talk to an HVAC professional. I wanna send him some information on what I'm working on. So they need a way to say, I'm working on this manufacturer, manufacturer part. Or if the work order has asset information, that should be automatically passed across to the to the procurement professional. And then it should be able to have something like a picture attached to it so that the procurement professional with that commodity can help the technician solve his problem and, and give him a list and give him back a quote for what he needs to, to provide. I point out some opportunities here, what the, what the technicians would like. We're not there yet in all cases, but there's a lot of work being done in this area and many, dis, many distributors are starting to provide it. They'd love to have picture recognition, uh, searching by, by uh, description on things they don't know. The one thing they typically will have is what's broken. If they could get a picture, they'd love to, they provide it. What we do now is please present us the picture so that our procurement people can use that as part of the solution find. What they'd love to get is the actual recognition. And the other important part is that this work request automatically gets routed to professionals with that help, not to 
a buyer or a middle person, but they need to be able to talk directly to technicians on the, from the other side who have familiarity with that particular trade and solve the problem. Now, what happens, the one, one pushback we got when we went on this journey was, wait a minute, I understand you have procurement professionals, but sometimes I need to need to speak directly to the OEM supplier. I've been doing business with this OEM supplier. He has a professional desk that helps me. He's always helped me. And in some cases, you need to know the make, model, and serial number for the actual part to know because of the way the material was, was built. So what we built into the into our solution is direct point of sale integration with many systems so that rather than talking to a middle person, even a procurement professional, we have suppliers and, and, and OEM is part of that, that to directly tie in into their point of sale system. So rather than a work request or the work request being routed to our buying desk, it can be routed directly to the supplier of choice. The supplier of choice can fill out the quote and send that order back to the technician for approval. Now, the alternative to that, let's talk about what, what's been the historical way of doing that. The historical way of been doing that is you call up your supplier desk, you talk to him. The, the supplier says, says, here's what I think you need. The technician writes it all down. He then fills out a, an email or whatever form. He sends that to a buying desk, and then they go and enter the information. And what we found with working with suppliers they much prefer if you could tie directly into a point of sale system so they can enter the information, send it directly to the technician and route it for approval rather than all of and, and eliminate the entry and re-entry. And from a technician standpoint, his, his need to write it down, send it back, and in many cases make a mistake. That's where the suppliers say they, they want to participate in this because they say, especially on expensive material, if they have to fill out the order and translate it, many times what they get back is a translation error and the wrong part gets ordered somewhere in the shuffle. So again, the idea is to eliminate that connection, be able to have the supplier directly through his point of sale system enter a quote and integrate that back in through technology right back so that the technician can simply say, I approve that and and let the order get placed or again go through internal approvals if required so the whole solution is to streamline the integration with the point of sale system and to standardize the information going back and forth i said in several locations here you know some things will have to go back for approval so the solution we we don't want to go to approval through an email right the, the, again the old way is well, the real old way is I call you up and you approve what I quoted. The, the, the next way was email. So I send you an email. You hopefully don't get lost in the hundreds of emails we all receive every day. And then you go and send an email back and you say, yeah, I approve that order. So this, this solution we had that has been built is as part of that solution. There's a simple tile. There's alerts set up. Here's the orders that the quote you came back on. And th this is the, do you approve it or not approve the order? Here's the price, here's the picture. You know, are you good with this solution? And, 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 uh, and again, avoid the bottlenecks, automate the workflows. And again, all this is built around a single workflow from a technician standpoint, from the beginning to end, he's been working in a, sim a single solution to find all his part requests. Finally, th this may sound like the, the, the piece that's most obvious, but it's not. What do technicians really need? They, they're, they're ordering parts throughout the day, and in many cases, they're going to go from job one, order some parts, job two, order some parts, job three, order some parts. So let's first focus on what's the key element in all of that from a technician standpoint, and that is his work order number. Historically, what's happened, the technician goes gets assigned a work order, he goes to a buying desk, he, cre he has to go to three suppliers. Each supplier gets a purchase order. Eventually he starts getting notice either that a purchase order has arrived. He has to then translate that purchase order A is work order A. So that, that's not obvious, it's a bookkeeping function. 
uh, or he has to, to remember which supplier was on which work order. So what do we need right now? We need a simple way so that all of that's put together by work order that speak in the language of the technician. Technicians are assigned work orders. They want to see what's the status of their material against that work order, not against a, a purchase order. So put in one place that translation. Again, technology can easily do this and say, let me look up by work order and let me see all of the statuses for all the material. If I've ordered material from three suppliers, let me know when all of the material, the, you know, part A comes in one day, two, second day, three to third day. Let me know when all the materials arrived. So that's the intent. So give them one location where they can find the material. And the most important time, a problem that needs to be solved is to get real time feedback from all of the supplier systems to let us know that materials arrived. This sounds daunting. It shouldn't be in our consumer lives. None of us today order anything on an e-commerce site, in which case we don't know way in advance when any when expected arrival is supposed to be there. And if there's changes, get real-time updates that what, you know when its items change and then get real-time tracking that it's been put on a truck, it's leaving city A, it's moved to city B, it'll be delivered in 20 minutes. Unfortunately, that's not been the spare part industry. And what's needed is to achieve that. This is the biggest sim and simplest and an obvious thing that the technicians want. They want to know real time, where's my material at? Finally, how do people order material? How, how do technicians order material? And I don't think I covered this at the beginning. What we find that 70% of the orders are made by a part number. Uh, doesn't surprise us because the technicians, they're working on something. There's two ways of finding what the part number is. Obviously, on major components, the part number is typically stamped on the item, and they will look up that item because they know if they get the same item they're taking apart, they will look at the item, the part number on the item, and place the order. However, not everything's stamped. So, what do they do when what they're working on does not have a stamp component on it to identify the part? What they need is to look at the bill of materials or the document or the goes into one of my friends used to call it, of uh, let's look at that make model and let's look at the drawings from the OEM manufacturers and look at the drawings to identify the part. Now, historically what they would do, you know, is go, go back to their desk, go back to their laptop, find the website for the OEM and then go search for that and then find the parts there, get the part number, re-enter it into the application and then search for the part. Or, or go site to site to site to find the part. So what they like to have is an integrated solution, whereas the item is a part of the of the smartphone solution. So what we've built in is a document library, an engineering document management library, it can be composed of PDF documents. It can be composed of videos, how to. I mean, in today's day and age. How many of us go to YouTube to go figure out how we want to fix something in our homes? Technicians are, are fixing many things they've never fixed before. Same thing. This document library needs to have videos in it. Needs to be and and in a perfect world, we want to make the documents reactive. That means that we digitize them rather than going into the document library, finding the item, and then going and searching through the item, but that alone is a big hurdle and an improvement from where we've been to make the diagrams actually reactive so that they can point at the diagram and automatically enable the search back to the back to the part they're trying to find. And, and with with all this is possible. That's what I'm basically trying to say. It's all possible, it can all be done by your smartphone. Yes, Deb. It sounds Fidge like this engineering document management system is a good way to kind of bridge the the knowledge gap that we see happening in terms of uh, skilled labor exiting the workforce and that IP kind of exiting with them, this kind of solves that challenge. Um, can you talk about the challenges or any issues that you've, that you've experienced and the timing involved 
in gaining technician user adoption, in, including you know, this type of component um, in terms of using this uh, mobile technology? Sure. Uh, well, I, I don't think I pointed out right now, what we have is a couple thousand users of the technology. So I'll go through the experience of adoption. It's new. Uh, it, what we found is that there's people that are very comfortable with smartphones, people that are at different stages of their careers and different stages of technology use. Uh, although I said it's ubiquitous that everybody's been provided these tools. Not all of us are as comfortable using the technology as others. So we see that the adoption will be driven primarily by, the, like any, I think, change management solution, you get early adopters. If you start out with 100 people, you'll get the first 20 that love technology and will jump on quickly. You'll get, the, and then those 20 will become sort of super leaders of your, of your push that, that they will, start seeing the value of it, they'll start saying that this is really working and they'll start promoting the solution within. I do say that what we find is it's important to have scheduled training, it's important to have videos, all of the things that are in this document library are very important to make people comfortable. It's also important to make the, the, the technology as intuitive as possible so that it's self, you know, I, I, I like to say most, most of the things we buy on the web, we typically don't get a user manual with. Well, the technology you provide probably should not need a user manual. It might have a video for how to use, but it should be that intuitive so you can apply it. And what, what we find is that you can get going really fast. Uh, in our case, you know, we went from a couple hundred to a couple thousand users in about a 12 month period. Okay. And finally, I think that, that that's pretty much a conclusion of, of the overall thing. I just want to summarize and then answer, then focus on any other questions that might be out there. So the, the key components, the intent, again, the intent was identified a key components. So I, if I had to pick two of the key components, it's the ability to search in a single place and the ability to know where my material's at. You know, the, the, there are the two key components. Search one place, not the, uh, eliminate the need for technicians to go place to place to place to place. And once I place an order, translate it by work order and let me know when that material arrives. The, there are the two biggest learnings we had based on both, both the discussions prior to development and the discussions ever since development and the ongoing discussions. If, if technicians get frustrated, they get frustrated because they can't find things or they don't know where the material is going to be arriving, even though we have the technology in place to provide it. This journey's just started. Uh, I, I want to stress the point, the continuous improvement. The, our technology continues to evolve. We continue to get ideas uh, about how we can make it better, we, including how to integrate AI in it. And, and th this, I think, is just, this is not a stable solution yet. It's, it's going to continue to evolve like most of the technology in our lives. And the important part is to continue to stay informed and see what what's capable of going. If, if, for examples, like things like picture search. Yes, Deb. Awesome. No, sorry, I was a little premature with jumping in there. I thought you were kind of uh, wrapping up, but I, I am wrapping up. That's that's pretty much my last thing. So, is there any mean, other questions awesome. out there? Yeah, I just want to thank you for sharing your valuable insights with us here today. It's been a great discussion. And we've addressed a few questions during the session, uh, but if anybody has any additional questions for FIDGE, you can go ahead and type them in the Q&A box. Um, I'll just go ahead and, and read some of these questions to you, FIDGE. Based on user feedback, what is the biggest area where users are seeking improvement? What are the restrictions technologically that are delaying the delivery of, of such improvements? I'd like, I like. was. I think I'd like to answer that. And I touched it there earlier, but let's focus on the the simplest improvement because it's it's really simple. Technicians want from the suppliers when they order a part the same thing we want as a consumer. They want to order something. They want to have a good idea of when it's going to arrive, and then they want visibility to its arrival. And the tech. There's really. No technology impediment. The technology's 
been there. Again, if it wasn't the technology available to do it, we wouldn't have it in our consumer lives. However, not everybody has built their supply chains yet to have visibility back through the sub supply chains, and meaning that we order something from supplier A, supplier A orders it from an OEM manufacturer who is supplier B, and in that case, supplier B and supplier A don't communicate back and forth to feed the information back in an in a optimal manner. So connecting the dots back through the overall layers of the supply chain is, I think, one of the areas that still is is not where it needs to be. And it's definitely an area that's improving since yes. um, post pandemic, if we can if we can use that term. But um, from a data perspective, then, what are the obstacles to gaining that visibility then? The, the biggest problem with data, and that's that's a great question, is that if I order the same thing from five suppliers, it's typically not defined the same by the five suppliers. Many supplier, if it, so if it if a technician's out there ordering, he's going to typically want to order by a manufacturer manufacturer part number. Spare parts typically don't have UPC codes. Five suppliers call the same thing five different things, and that that problem in the industry is still there. We see there's a need for standardizing the data. We have added layers of standardization to try to make it look the same for the technician so they know it's the same. But I think it's a, still a problem that the industry needs to address. Absolutely. And I know that we have master data management on our list of topics for future First Fridays as well. So it's a big issue. It's important. It's important. So, yeah, this is just touching the surface a great topic to, that we can share some light on how we try to handle that. Absolutely. Besides technology, what other components, in your opinion, are critical in delivering this type of service model? Um, I, 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 I think that, you know, that while we've done a lot of automation, I said 90% of, of those orders are handled through the catalogs after you standardize them and, and things like that. I think the remaining part is there, there, there needs to be a service function on this there needs to be, if the technicians don't want to have to call, to, you know, eight different places to find the status, there needs to be a service component. There needs to be one place, one place to open a ticket. We, we need to make their life simple. They, we need to get, you know, I call 18 people for 18 different things. So there's definitely in our solution, a service component. Tickets are all came in through a single service desk. A person answers the phone and says, John, I can tell by your phone number, here's your five tickets you're having open. Which one do you want to talk about? Do you need to open another ticket? I think that service component is as critical as, and, and that includes the buying desk and, and, and the payment desk and all that. But that, I, I don't want to, it's not 100% technology. There's a whole labor component beyond a service desk component as part of the solution. That makes sense. And, and that was a point that you touched on a lot during the discussion about how technicians need to be able to talk to uh, somebody that speaks their language, so to speak. So that's- People need to talk to people still, absolutely. Absolutely, especially now. Yep. Well, it looks like that's all of the questions that we have. If there are any more questions, please email us at sales at sdi.com and we'll be happy to answer your questions. This webinar was recorded and we will send a copy of the slides to everyone that was in attendance. And we will send the link, the YouTube link over when that's available as well. I wanna thank you again, Fidge, for um, being our guinea pig and kicking off this first, first Friday with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, so much. Thank you all for joining us as well. Have a good day.